Good morning guys, it's time for another day in my workshop. I've got a really interesting day today because I'm working on so many different things. Some of them are gluing and when I do gluing quite often the job itself, the, the actual gluing that I'm doing, the preparation might take sort of between 10 and 20 minutes, then the gluing literally, you know, I've got to do it really fast. It can like take two minutes and then I've just got to wait for it to dry. Um, I'm also doing a cello bridge, a bow rear hair, I'm setting up uh, one or two instruments, and then I'm doing some cleaning and polishing. Um, so it's a lot of different stuff that I'll be doing. Today, I'm not going to start in my workshop. I'm, uh, I'm just starting on my front bench because I'm working on a cello. Okay, so I'm just in the final stages of fitting a bridge. I just sharpened my chisel. So what's important again when you're fitting a bridge, it needs to, you know, fit firmly onto the top plate and it has to be straight, of course. And you want to have a really clear connection between the bridge and the instrument. And so you want it to fit 100% because that way the sound waves or the sound vibration gets transferred very smoothly onto the top plate and then into the instrument. This chisel is beautifully sharp. The sharper it is, the smaller you can just take off these really, really small. Take a look. You can just take off these very tiny bits of timber. This actually fits already. So I've just got to determine the height and uh, then I can saw it down. I'll go back into my workshop. It's just this space here is so much better for working on cellos. So I don't have a lot of desk space. So I mark it approximately and then I mark it more exactly. Yeah, for cello I go about five five millimeters on the A string and around between eight and nine millimeters on the C string. Okay, so I've just got to mark that off. I've got my template. And this is very important to get that curvature just right. Then I'll put it back on and just triple check the string height again. If I cut it too low, I've got to make another one and that doesn't excite me too much. There you go, five millimeters, five millimeters eight millimeters okay i'm happy with that so now i've just got to use the saw to cut this down okay so now i've just got to um plane this so getting the thickness right is important. Uh, it's actually very important for the sound. And now I'm pretty much ready to just do all the carving out, you know, just get that all right. And of course uh, this always goes really well with some coffee. Got my favorite cup. Ah. So this cellist, um, he hadn't actually played for ages, but he's been playing in a band and uh, and he's got some friends that are in a band. And, and so, uh, you know, it, uh, they really like the, the string sound in the band. So he's going to be using his cello to um, you know to to record some music which is really exciting so i'm basically getting his cello working really well so he came in uh he came in a couple of weeks ago i think and it set his sound post had fallen down so i just kind of got the instrument going uh because i've been too busy um to to actually take on the work a couple of weeks ago but uh but that got him going he did some recording he's got some more recording coming up so i'm just getting his cello ready for that so that's pretty exciting stuff some of the cards Carving on the bridge is uh, is more for show than anything else, and uh, and it's all about like kind of showing off your skills as a basically like a sculptor, like a wood sculptor. Um, I mean, while violin making, there's a lot of different aspects to it. Part of it is actually sculpting, and a lot of the Mittenwald violin makers, the ones in southern Germany, they they were basically all wood sculptors and so there were farmers in summer and winter it was too cold so they had all their cows in the stable warming up the house and what do you do when you've got like four months of nothing and being snowed in you know you you do some carving so in winter they did a lot of wood carving a lot of sculpting and uh, those sculptures went all over europe and places but then when the trade route changed through Mittenwald which is that town they started just saying oh well you know like a, and and obviously the trade route from Italy so viol a lot of violins came through there they they obviously thought well you know we can do some carving you know we can do carving so we can make these too and they started violin making and uh, 
one of the violin makers uh, was actually Klotz. Uh, you you saw the some of the restoration work I did on that Klotz violin. I actually have another one here. I'll, I'll just get it. So this is a beautiful Klotz violin that I've actually got for sale in my shop at the moment. And uh, it's about, it's definitely 220 years old. Um, it doesn't have a label, so, and, and the Klotz family, you know, some of them made some similar instruments. But it sounds amazing. It's kind of got that deeper, richer sound as well. It's absolutely beautiful. So you wouldn't want to use it for a solo in front of an orchestra, but it's a really nice instrument for it, like for an orchestral player or a hobby player who loves that slightly deeper, richer sound. And I get quite a lot of hobby players who don't mind spending $20,000 on an instrument. So it's really beautiful. I, I, um, I only got it last year and uh, it did some restoration. I didn't need to do a lot of restorations. It's mostly varnish work on it, but, uh, but it's absolutely gorgeous. Anyway, that was the story of the Mittenwald wood carvers. Maybe I'll do a whole episode on Mittenwald sometime and the violin makers there, uh, because my, my father did his uh, master degree in Mittenwald. So. And I've got some friends that are very good violin makers that live in that area as well. Getting a bit warm now, so I'm wearing my Black Sheep Coffee t-shirt. It's my one of my favorite cafes here in Brisbane. Uh, it's a friend of mine that started Black Sheep Coffee. He's a very good roaster. Actually, I'm drinking Black Sheep Coffee. That's getting close to being finished. Um, yeah, just got to got to mark in the strings, do some sanding, uh, like that, sanding the outside surfaces, and then it'll be finished. Okay, you got to mark the string basing. There we go. Okay, so I'm happy with the bridge now. Next, I've actually got to just check over. I'm sending a couple of instruments overseas and I just really want to just play them and make sure everything's fine. So I'm going to go back over to the shop and uh, with my sound post adjuster and do the final tweak. Okay, so the first one is a um, Salvatore Lombardi violin going to America. Got this beautiful flurry elbow that comes with it. Frozen it up already. So I made sure I left all the fine tuners on here just to make life easy for tuning. They can always change the tailpiece later. And it's all about, you know, I've got really nice string height on it to make it easy to play. Now I'm just trying the full range, you know, trying everything, just listening to the sound. And I'm going to do some slight tweaking on the sound post. Um, so I want to remeasure. The strings just feel a tiny bit high. So I'm going to revisit them and just lower them a little bit. It's very little, but uh, it's definitely going to make a difference. So um, I've lowered this one. Because this is a new player too, I'm trying to get the strings really nice and close to the fingerboard just to, you know, make life easier. Okay, so I've got this beautiful certificate to go with the uh, Lombardi violin. So what's important when I pack up the violin is to make sure that the instrument doesn't rattle around inside the case. There should be no movement. Uh, because, you know, if it does get some bumps and things like that, uh, you really don't want it to uh, shake around inside the case. So I'm going to fill out, um, make sure that it sits super firmly. Okay, so, uh, so I'd like to actually put some bubble wrap either side of the bridge, just in case. You, you never hope that anything happens, but just in case it does, if the bridge was to tip, that it wouldn't destroy the top plate. So, uh, and this could actually probably help hold the bridge up if there was some pressure. So I'm going to pop that on this side of the bridge. I'm going to pop this on the other side of the bridge. This is now incredibly firm. Okay, so that's all ready to go. I can close that now and then Broly's going to do all the bubble wrapping and stuff around here. Okay, so of course I've had to go out for lunch. I'm in one of my favourite cafes and lunch just arrived. So I'm also with one of my favourite people. And I rode my bike here and I'm going to keep riding in a bit. Just riding my bike back to my workshop. 
Okay, I just got back from my lunch break. So now I've got to do a bunch of things. First of all, have some more coffee. That's very important. But uh, I mixed up some oxalic acid. Uh, it's in very, 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 very rare cases that uh, I might treat part of an instrument. So this, this instrument here that I'm working on, I'll show you. So this particular instrument has been it is so oil soaked around here that um, that it actually won't glue back together like the glue just comes undone so I'm actually removing the oil that's oil from perspiration and that's why you know if you don't get an instrument serviced regularly and the edges wear off um, the oil from the perspiration can soak into the instrument and it can make it so hard to glue. So I'm just soaking that out. It's, it's a relatively new technique that I haven't used very much. So um, yeah, hoping that'll come out really nicely. And then I've got to wash it up really well and then hopefully it'll glue a lot better. Okay, anyway, um, so that one's just soaking away over there. Uh, apart from that, I have some instruments to polish and, and I really need to do some gluing, but I've, I've been really quite distracted all day today, like there's been quite a few interruptions. So uh, hopefully now um, I can just get into my work. Okay, let's get on to this one. So this is a an instrument I'm polishing. Uh, so I did a service on this. It's planing fingerboard, clean and polish. I also have to do the sound post. I also have to do the bow, but uh, yeah, that's about it. And then I'll get into my uh, gluing projects after that. This violin I'm working on is for a conservatorium student uh, here in Queensland. So uh, they get a lot of wear and tear on their instruments. Uh, you know, the uh, fingerboards often need planing because, uh, you know, <laughs> Especially the first finger on the A string. It seems to be the most used finger and uh, It wears really deep grooves into the fingerboard uh, Yeah, so I planed the fingerboard on this one. I'm doing the clean and polish It's got a bunch of a bit of wear and tear on the edges as well So the corners here are a bit worn off So I'll be putting some varnish on that corner as well just to make sure that we don't have any uh, You know it doesn't get any more damage Okay, so that's gotten things started. I'm gonna get some varnish onto the um, the corners now. This violin's had a lot of wear and tear. Okay, I'm gonna do some polishing on this Kalong Mazong violin. Kalong Mazong was quite a well-known French maker. Um, it was actually a company and uh, they exported instruments all over the world and quite a lot ended up here in Brisbane in Australia in the early 1900s, 1920s. Uh, around then there was one particular music shop that sold them quite a lot. Uh, and uh, there's actually, uh, I found a bunch of advertisements for the instruments which uh, like newspaper advertisements, which was kind of cool. Anyway, that's, uh, yeah, I'm going to keep working on this one in uh, a little bit later. I have to start thinking about some of the gluing jobs that I have to do because they have to dry till tomorrow. So I definitely got to make sure I get them all finished today so I can do the next set of gluing tomorrow. First, I've got to take some clamps of this other um, violin. This violin just had a bunch of open joints and the fingerboard had come off, so just taking care of those things. Okay, so I've just taken a clamp of one of these cracks that I've worked on here. I've got it nicely marked. There's a crack up here that is open. It's just open a little bit, so I'm just going to glue that. So I'm rubbing glue in there at the moment, basically rubbing back and f and then uh, it kind of gets the glue in there. There's a bit of capillary action as well. And then I'll just put a clamp on quite firmly. There's actually a bit of glue squeezing out when I, uh, when I put the clamp on. So I know the glue's gone all the way through, which is great. 
There's also a bunch of cracks that were here that I glued a while ago, so I'm going to have to reinforce those. This cello has been in the family for a couple of generations, and it's going to be passed down to the granddaughter of the owner, so that's kind of exciting. Okay, it's got to check that this actually came together properly because if it doesn't come together straight I may as well not glue it. No, I'm happy with that. There's a bit where it, there's sort of a cross break here. That one I'll have to yeah I'll have to make a little counter mold for that. So the next thing I'm gonna do is this. Uh, so this is a double base I've been working on for a little while. Um, it's got a number of cracks across the top here. There were one uh, two cracks here one crack there, another crack up here, crack up here, and uh, and the center join. I think it's actually closed the center join, so I'll be checking that anyway. And then the worst bit is there was a crack here, but unfortunately the player lost the piece, like lost all this. So this is, I'll literally be making a new piece for this, which is crazy. It's a huge repair. All the other cracks are fine, no big deal. But this is, uh, this is a big deal. You know, there's a big chunk missing. So I basically have to make a piece of double base and then varnish it and all that. And then try and make the varnish match in with the rest of the double base. Lots of fun. And working, like having a double base uh, here is actually quite a challenge because I just don't have so much space. So I have to really be creative with my desk space, my floor space, and, uh, you know, just finding places to work. I mean, the repairs are very similar to all the other repairs that I do, but, um, but it's just a bigger challenge because of the size of the instrument. Uh, so, yeah, so I've... I've got these cleats here that I'll be cutting back. These are ones that I fitted. I angled the grain on there slightly so that it would warp. Um, yeah, so, so it wouldn't warp too badly when it uh, or dry out too badly, like differently to the top plate. Uh, but this should come together really nicely. Uh, yeah, it's just this bit, huge challenge, and I'm not going there today. Uh, I just took the clamps off, so now I'm going to look at the rest of the body and just see uh, what my next step is there. There is this huge gaping hole that I have to fix, so that's going to be that's going to be quite a bit of work uh, fixing up that hole. Take a look at this. Hello. Oh wow, there's a bit of a spider's web here. This is definitely what you call a hole in the double base. Okay, gluing time. Now I'm only gonna, there's a crack here and I'm only gonna, I'm only gonna glue part of that crack. So this crack needs to be glued in sections. Okay, here we go. A lot of pressure here. That's a lot of pressure on the crack, not a lot of pressure on me. <laughs> so now I've actually still got to do a bow here, and uh, I've got to give that cello, you know, the one where uh, the cello that I made the bridge for, I've got to give that a little bit of a clean and service uh, that's being picked up tomorrow. It needs new strings as well, so I'll try and get those on tonight so the instrument can settle in, and then I'll do the final work, uh, the final work tomorrow. But first of all, some peg paste. Peg paste is always a very important part of the uh, instrument service and making sure that the pegs actually fit. This is an old German double bass. Well, it's actually not that old. It's uh, from the 1980s I believe and funnily it's a uh, Benedict Lung from 1985 and it's one year before I started as a violin maker and I remember when I started I uh, we used to sell those instruments so uh, back then there were no Chinese instruments so the German instruments were pretty much the there were Korean, oh, there were Chinese instruments, that was the Skylarks, uh, but they were dreadful. 
back then the Korean instruments were way better but uh, looking back at them now not that much of a difference really like they're yeah <laughs> not so great uh, but this was kind of the best you could get at the time this is an artificial varnish on here these were expensive I think they were I think they were close to five thousand dollars like this is in 1985 so that would have been hugely expensive for that time. Uh, 1980, I could still buy a Mars bar for 20 cents. You know, in today's money, that would have been a lot more. This is great, so I'm ready to put the strings on this cello. I'm gonna use Larsen strings on this cello, and uh, yeah, I've got everything else ready. I might put a bit of grease uh, on these fine tuners. Larsen strings are so funny because every packet is packaged differently. I tried to tear them open <laughs> like this. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't, depending on how they felt like packaging the string. It's always good to let an instrument settle overnight before the client comes. All right, I'm gonna leave this overnight. I'm just gonna pop it over into my shop and then uh, I've gotta finish up for the day. I'm gonna have to do that rehair tomorrow morning. So I'm going to work on uh, on this violin here. Okay, so I'm uh, I'm just going to clean up. Uh, so I've soaked soaked these areas. There were some old cleats there that I um, just a bit of old timber that was glued onto there. They have to get that off so I can put some new ones in. Um, and then I wash off the old glue with hot water. I've been soaking it with cold water for the last hour and a half. And then I'll, I'll put some new reinforcements here. This crack here wasn't well done, like well glued. So I'm gonna, I'm working on opening it up actually. Let me see how well that goes. Sometimes better to glue a crack in two parts anyway. Gee, it looks like uh, the dirty part here, some of it is actually just bad retouching. Well, that's gonna be a lot of fun, isn't it? Give the violin maker some extra work. Yeah, that's that's varnish, that dark stuff. It's not actually dirt. I wanna put leather, some thick dark varnish onto here. Well, that's something I'll have to work with at a later date, I think. Just gently gonna clamp this together so it doesn't lose its shape. Then I've just gotta clean that other French violin with the, uh, where I've been soaking the oil. So this can just sit here for now and I'll work on that French violin. This is pretty uh, pretty intense. I've uh, never had to, I haven't worked with this uh, with this system much before. So it's all a bit scary. So what's important is that um, in the end that the violin glues together and works properly again. It's actually quite an old violin from the 1850s. It's a must violin and just no glue will hold it together. It's crazy. I'm gonna dry this. I've literally like immersed, <laughs> immersed this in water. Kind of scary, but it's it's the only way to do it. I'm gonna dry this and then uh, I'll have to clamp this so it doesn't lose shape. Okay, so I've just rough clamped that. I'm gonna put that on the workbench uh, just back here and let that dry overnight. And then tomorrow I'm actually gonna soak that again. I'll probably do that a number of times, but that's me done for today. I've gotta to close up the shop. It's, uh, it's nearly seven o'clock at night. Um, uh, it's been a quite a busy day. I usually like finishing earlier than that, but some days I work later. Yeah, it's time to go home to the family and have some dinner. So thanks for watching. It's always great to have you guys, you know, join in watch me do some repairs. I hope it gives you a bit more of an insight into what I do here every day and I hope it helps you understand your instrument a bit better. So anyway, I mean, violins or the violin family is just, you know, they are great instruments. There's so much you can do. They are so versatile. So uh, keep making beautiful music, keep having fun playing. Don't take yourself too seriously. It's all right, you know, it's all right to have fun. And uh, if you like this video, hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and hit the little bell. Uh, that way you find out every time I post a new video. All right, thanks for watching guys.